Alright, so having a look at a function that's a little bit more involved, we're looking to find the derivative of f of x, where f of x is defined as 3x squared plus 5x. Might look pretty simple, but you'll see once we get into expanding it, it gets pretty involved. We're going to use this just once to check the gradient at x equals 1. Okay, so starting out with my first principles equation. f dashed x is the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. It is very likely that you will actually have this memorized at some point in time, because I'll make you do so many practice questions. So, huh, okay, when I actually plug in this time, it's a little bit more involved. So when I plug in for x plus h, it's got to go in place of both x's. Okay, so when I do f of x plus h, that means where I had x's before, now I put in x plus h. So I get 3x plus h squared plus 5x plus h minus my original function. Okay, so I just copy that down exactly as it is. It's going to go exactly there. Okay, so I get this little expression which I now need to expand and simplify, and that's where this can get a little bit involved. So at this point, I get 3 times this thing plus 5 times this thing minus this other thing. So I say, well, what do I do need, need to do first? Well, I need to expand that guy. So again, using the same principle, um, that a plus b squared, a little more like a 2, that's a squared, I think I'm going to run out of room, plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, so it's really important that you don't forget that middle, 2ab. Okay, so when I expand this, this is what it looks like. Okay, so I expand out that squared to get x squared plus 2xh plus x squared. Okay, of course, if this had been something like x cubed, that would be four terms long. It's going to expand even more. Okay, so do be prepared for that. I will guide you through how to use the CAS for that as well. So when I get to this point, I'm going to start expanding my bracket, so multiplying everything in. The negative goes into both pieces um, as kind of my next step. So I end up with 3x squared plus 6xh, 3h squared, 5h plus 5x, sorry, 5x plus 5h, minus and minus. Okay, so it gets to be quite the expression. But then I go through and there's always going to be stuff that cancels. So the 3x squared cancels 3x squared, negative 5x, and plus 5x cancel. So I've already narrowed it down to basically three terms in my denominator. Okay, so I think I've just copied it out again for no apparent reason. So going through and now I have simplified it. So ignore that, that hasn't actually changed anything. Okay, so I've simplified my uh, denominator. So now I'm going to have a look and see, well, if I was to factorize an h out of the top, that would be h, 6x, plus 3h, plus 5. And then I would cancel the h top and bottom, okay, or you can just do that kind of going through one term at a time. So I'm going to end up with 6x plus 3h plus 5. Okay, so I end up with this limit as h tends to 0 of 6x plus 3h plus 5. Now, not all of the terms are going to be affected when I actually plug in h is equal to 0. So as h tends to 0, that has no effect on the 6x or the 5, but it is going to send that 3h off to 0. Okay, so when I actually take the limit, I end up with my final, final answer, which is f prime of x, f dashed x, is equal to 6x plus 5. So a fair bit of working out um, to get that as my final answer. Again, there is a little pattern. You'll notice 2 times 3 is 6, and then that 5 is just sitting there. We'll go into detail about kind of the shortcuts for calculating derivatives next time. But for now, we want to be really mathematically rigorous and show these by first principles. Now, this is going to involve a fair bit of algebra. Um, so again, I will show you in just a moment how to expand on the CAS. We haven't quite finished. You need to use it to determine the gradient at x is equal to 1. Well, that means this function here, well, that tells me what gradients are. So let's just plug in 1. So if I put 1 in the function, I end up with 11. Let's just go to the graph one last time and confirm that that is true. Fast forward a little bit if you want to just see how to expand on the CAS. 
And so now I've got my new function graphed here, 3x squared plus 5x. I want to take this slider and slide it over to 1, and I should really hope that I get 11 as my answer. So I'm very close there as I approach 1. Okay, I do get 11. And notice again, it is it approaches 11 on either side, but at the actual point, it is exactly 11. And that's what the derivative is all about. That's what that tangent is going to tell us, the gradient at that particular point. So let's just have a quick look at expanding on the CAS. That can help us out if we have to do something like a power of 3, 4, 5. Um, there may be one or two of those in the textbook questions. All right, so let's suppose that I had to do maybe x to the power of 4. Okay? And that's going to be really messy to just completely do by hand, so I'm going to show you a couple of uh, helpful hints. The first is the tool expand. So if you have set everything up by hand, you can go menu, algebra, 3, expand, 3. Again, I recommend just typing 3, 3. And then you type out your expression. So let's suppose we were going just maybe x plus, we just wanted to do the x plus h. You simply type x plus h to the 4 and click enter and that will expand that completely for us. So that's kind of part of it, but I can actually do more than that. I could subtract off the x to the 4 and it will do that for me, or even I could have done this whole thing over h and let's see what happens. So if I try to just get it all done at once, I might actually make it look pretty for you, how about that? So I can use control division to get that, x plus h to the 4 minus x to the 4, if I put a 4 there instead of an h I'll go back and fix that. Let's see what happens here. Hmm, okay so it does actually go through and cancel out our h's, so notice looking here versus here, it's gone through and cancelled out those h's, so that would be basically the expression you'd be taking the limit of if you were finding the derivative of x to the power 4. Now notice it puts up this little warning symbol. What that is just kind of saying is you've divided out something. You've essentially placed a restriction that h can't be 0, um, and that's not necessarily clear just from here. So that's all that, that symbol there means. If you want to check your answer, again we'll get into more detail later, we can go menu. I'm doing some calculus, so let's press the number 4. I would like to find a derivative, so I press the number 4. You type the variable that you're using, and then you can just type in your function. So I know this one already, the derivative of x of x squared, well that should just be 2x. And that's exactly what that gives me, so that can be a helpful hint as well. If you're using a function multiple times, you can use define, and we get defined by going menu 1 1. I then define, sorry I'm not sure why I'm in capital locks, let's try again f of x is equal to, can be something scary looking, or not overly scary looking, pressing enter, and then when you do find the derivative, so menu, calculus, derivative, you can simply type f of x, which is kind of a nice, nice tool. So a couple of helpful hints, one is that expand can be really powerful to help you simplify expressions, especially with higher powers and then you can actually check on your CAS by using that derivative tool. Okay. So that's the basic gist for um, using first principles. Really powerful, powerful tool. Um, I do recognize that it is tedious, but there are a few questions for you to complete for homework.